Welcome back to Business Help. In this video, we're going to be going over some of the most useful formulas in Excel. Before we get started here, if you do like this video, make sure you subscribe and turn notifications on, as well as hit the like button. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. So the first formula we're going to be going over is the date formula. We're going to be going over today. How do we put the date in so it's today? So we're going to click on cell B2 here. We're going to go to the formulas tab. In. I'm going to go over here and we're going to date and time. And I'm going to go down to today. So it's going to bring up this. And all you do to enter today's date is you're going to hit the OK button. So now we're going to have today's date in there. Perfect. So now, what's next? What's one of the better functions, the next one we're going to cover? We're going to be going over VLOOKUP. This is very helpful about moving certain parts of the data somewhere else. We did have another video on this. So if you do like this video, we I do have another video on my channel that covers more in depth VLOOKUP, but we're going to go over the basics right now. All right, so we want to calculate the percent based off the order price. So let's say, look at our discount chart down here. Let's say they order $0, they're going to get 0% off. Like 0 to $250, $250 to $500, they're getting 2%, 500 to 1,000, 4%, and so on. All right, so let's go ahead and how do we calculate this? All right, so we're going to go to lookup and reference. We're going to keep scrolling down until we find VLOOKUP. All right, we've got VLOOKUP. So the lookup value is going to be our first value over here. Our table array is going to be this table down here. And so we lock it in. We're going to make sure we hit our F4 key. Let's go ahead and lock it in. That way that area will not move with our formula. Column number, we're going to go to column number two. because That's what column number we are wanting to display here. That's going to be our percentage based off of our chart and a range lookup. We're just going to leave it as logical. All right. Now you can see that brought our discounts and our percentages around and made it very easy. All right. So that worked out really well. Let's go ahead and just go ahead and finish this on. So we're going to create a formula here. Our price times our discount percent. We're going to drag this down. And we're going to do our final price equals our order price minus our discount in dollars. And drag this down as well. All right. So that's a very easy way to quickly add this stuff. We could have manually did it. It would take a lot more time, though. So that's what VLOOKUP is nice for. It's able to take one area and put it into another section based off of a chart or graph you're using. All right. The next formula we're going to be using is the IF function. So we're going to go over here. We're going to be going to, I'm just going to look it up. I'm not sure exactly which one it is. It may actually be in your logical. You go ahead and look it up as well. We're going to go to the if function. All right. So with the if function, we're going to see if this, we're going to use if the order price is greater than $500. So we're going to click on this. So B4. We're going to use the greater than sign. $500. And if the value is true, we're going to put yes. And if the value is false, we're going to put no. Hit OK. All right. Now, as you can see, any so anything greater than $500 is going to have a, yellow, a yes for an important client. Anything less than $500 is going to have a no because they are not going to be as important. That's it's a really easy way to do it. But once if we want to have something like, like we want to see if their order price is great, good and they ordered more than a certain number of times. So to do that, we're going to go back over here. We're going to, instead of making it, we're going to go ahead and delete this function. Instead of making it if, we're going to make it an and function. All right. So we're going to go ahead and enter 240. So this is going to have to be greater than 500 and you can do multiple things but we're only going to do two things and this is also going to be have to be greater than 10. okay all right so instead of it being a true a uh, yes or no it's going to be a false or true all right we have two instances where this is true 
So that's another very way we could do this. It's very helpful and very easy way to distinguish between certain things. It's why I typically like it. It can quickly sort and help you use data and actually figure out what numbers are meaning. All right, next couple are going to be a little easier, and then we will get to our final formula, which I think is honestly my favorite formula out of all of them. So let's go ahead, we're going to do our sum formula. Let's say we want to figure out how much this order was worth. It's a very easy formula. So all we're going to do is we're going to go to, we can either just click the auto sum button, or so I'm going to do just click this sum right here. All right, so now it's going to bring up the sum option. It's automatically going to select this area. It's the area I wanted to sum, so we're going to hit enter. All right, very easy way to use sum. You can also go ahead and click the drop down area, click on sum, or also sum is used a lot, and it's actually going to be on the home home tab, and it's going to be in this area over here in the editing. Same with average, count numbers, and others. All right. Our next formula we're going to be going over is the average. So let's go see what's our average order size. All right. To calculate this, we're going to use this area here. Click on average. All right. Now you can see it's got this area highlighted. But we want to calculate based off our order price. So instead of this, we're just going to click over here and drag down what our what we want our average to be. Then we're going to hit enter. All right, so it's automatically calculated our average over there. And we're going to just go ahead and redo our sum formula. So it's over here in total sales. Auto sum. Right. Once again, select the area we want. Hit enter. It's going to be the same number as this. That number over there. All right. We two more functions we're going to cover. We're going to go ahead and we're going to use the count function. Count formula here. So we're going to use count numbers. Count these all right because those aren't numbers it won't be able to count them for us but if we did uh, go ahead and copy this formula and paste it over here as you can see it was able to count that so how do we go ahead and count this if we want to count them and we're going to go ahead and just delete this formula we're going to go back to the formulas tab and we're just going to go ahead and search for functions here to search it, let's go Awesome. And there, click the insert function right there. So we're going to search count. All right. So we're going to hit OK. So we want to count those numbers. Those right there. All right. So we did use the count over here. It does work. Let's see which count we need to find here. Count the number. That counts numbers. Count A would be the number in the cells that are not empty. We're going to use that one. Select this area. Hit OK. Now it's going to be able to do this. The first count only uses numbers, but the, any of the other ones, if you scroll down through, there's a couple, they do a couple different things, but the count A is the one you want to use, that way it's going to count all the cells that are not empty. That's what we wanted to do, we wanted to count all the ones that were not empty. So let's say we would have, let me just delete that. Now it's just going to automatically drop to 9. Undo that, it's going to be back up to 10. So it's a very easy way to figure that out. And our final formula, what we're going to go over, is going to be the concatenate formula. I've shown this in other videos, you can look at it, it's very easy. We're going to have a very quick demonstration on it here, but I do have a concatenate video that goes over a couple of ways you can use it as well as more in depth with the formula. So let's go ahead and just use it. It's going to be over. We're just going to go ahead and look this one up. It's going to be concatenate. All right. We're going to use the concatenate function, not the concat function. It's going to join several pieces of text together. So let's say we're trying to figure out what our order number or order something is. So we're going to go ahead and just use Jan's company because that's what we want to use the company name first. And the text, we're going to use a, we're going to hit the enter key. We're going to hit, use a dash and then another enter key. All right, and our final text we want to join is our order number. We're going to hit OK. So as you can see, it automatically joined all those. Instead of us retyping it all out or copying and pasting, copy and pasting. I don't actually just joined it for. So we can go ahead and just drag this down. It's going to do the same for all of them. 
So it's a very easy way to join pieces of data. It's also an easy way to create emails, other lists like this. But on this information, it's easy to be able to create what order information and what our orders are. So hopefully this video is helpful. And if it was, go ahead and smash the like button as well as subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Thanks for watching.